we do it like we do it. Hi, 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 everybody. Welcome back and happy Wednesday. Okay, guys. So I've been <laughs> keeping everybody posted. We have the new baby here. Jason is in Charleston, and I am trying to run this shit by myself. It is a lot. Okay. I'm definitely overwhelmed, and that's okay. I, it's good because it puts things in perspective for me. I don't even, I asked Jason, I said, How do I start the laundry machine? He said, The washer. And I'm like, oh, okay. I don't know how to do anything. I got to get more independent. I'm not an independent bitch. And now I need to learn how to be. But before we get into all of this, go ahead, pop off, smash the like button, show some love, and get activated in the live chat because we have so bad, it's good with Ryan Bailey coming in with the bedhead, and we love it. So let's welcome Ryan. Hello. Smash that Smash that like button. Come on. Yes. Let's get the like button smashed. Welcome. Yes. Good, good morrow. Good morrow, Lisa Michelle. Now you know how much Jason does for you. Love it. Yeah, no, guys, I'm not. I'm not joking. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I don't, sometimes when I'm like, I could do this on my own. <laughs> like, it just takes these little moments where he goes out of town to humble me. Ryan, I took the dogs. The other two, I took them to the beach this morning because I knew that I was taking them to the groomer. I brought them into the groomer and I said, I just want to let you know this is the cut. And they said, Yeah, they've been here three times. So we know the cut. And I said. Harlow and Theo have been here? And they said, yeah, usually it's Jason who brings them. And I said, I didn't even know that. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is happening? I just don't know. I don't have a grip on reality. No, that's uh, listen, when you live in reality shows, uh, the, your reality is already skewed. So your actual yeah. reality is, uh, it's, 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 it's a weird occurrence that you have to live 24 hours talking about reality shows. So when your own reality, you can't be expected to do normal things like normal people. We're, we're just yeah. used to like table flips and complaining about pins and batteries and Ariana and things like that. That's why I think that I, I, you know, what's funny is navigating life, like the way that I deal with things, I deal with them in a very reality TV like way. Like where when I'm happy, I'm super happy. And like when I'm like, <laughs> I asked for four shots of espresso, not three shots. <laughs> you know, like I then I'm like fucking flip the fucking table. I, it's just what? wild to me because that is no, not it's... how life works. And my dad always tells me, he's like, you're going to get punched in the face one day. It's going to happen. No, I mean. I, no, I'm a very quiet and like mild mannered in my real life. But when I talk about reality TV, I get like all hyper. This is what like I imagine like people that love sports. Like I yell at the TV. Like last night I was yelling at the TV. I was like, come on, Lala. Are you kidding me? Lala, give me a break, Lala. Like I'll, I'll get like activated in that sense. Why? But then when I, in my real life, I'm very quiet and meek. So it's it's an interesting occurrence. Yes. Uh, also, hello to everybody in the chat. Yes, I have bed head. I just rolled out of bed. So <laughs> it's uh, it's nine o'clock over here. They said, I like the mess up look. You look good, good. right? Well, thank you. Well, then get a, get a load of this. It's very messy. Yes. Well, I have to ask you because I asked the live chat and the majority ruled in favor of Vanderpump Rules. But what are you enjoying more right now? Vanderpump Rules or the Valley? Well, I enjoy the Valley a little bit more just because it's it doesn't have the stink of Scandival on it. It's a mess. It's yeah. a complete mess. I do like and there is like new characters that I enjoy getting to know. So I'm in this kind of like early romance with the Valley. But Vanderpump Rules, I felt like last night's episode was very frustrating. I thought it was uh, it was way too many activities. I was like, why all of a sudden are we doing like top golf, paintball? We're going like there's too many activities. Just sit on a couch and talk this through. But yeah, like the valley is uh the valley I'm kind of enjoying more than I thought I would enjoy it. Yeah. Um but Vanderpump Rules is just a frustrating show from top to bottom. And I thought last night was extremely frustrating. It was, it seemed like so segmented in these weird ways. And I don't really know the through line. And I was super creeped out by the Katie and Schwartz going after the same very young girl. Yeah. Like we're just like out here grooming Sheena's nanny. Um. <laughs> well, oh, gee, I mean, but seriously, I hate to say it, but she looked young. Like they said she was She's 24 baby. years old. And I was like, it looked like she was like 21 years old. And I, I hate to say that, but I was just like, she looks so young, uh, really young. 
You know what's so funny is I find, I think that Tom and Katie are both very attractive people. And I could see where obviously people would be interested in them, not just because of the celebrity attached to it. But yes, this was this was wild to watch. And if we're going to start with the, the Vanderpump Rules episode, I wanted to kind of just like go through because there are a few things that threw me off. And one of them being Joe. Now, Joe, I'm she's. Oh, we're we're supposed to feel bad for Joe now, you guys. We're supposed to feel bad for I Joe, so I guess we her. feel bad I'm for Joe. I'm just warming up to her. Well, no, I'm warming up to her as well, but I I the one thing that you're never going to get me to believe and the one thing that will probably it'll be admitted 2 years from now is Joe a thousand percent knew that Sandoval and the artist formerly known as Raquel Levis she knew that they were dating. Period. Yeah. You can lie all you want, but I that's know. that's the that's the one point where it's like I don't feel as bad for Joe as some people do when I know she is holding on to a lie, completely holding on to that lie. Yeah. But I do, I mean, but what a weird end too. It was a very sad end where she's like, I gotta go call my dad. What a what a what a very real line to say when somebody when a relationship is going sour and she's like, I gotta go call my dad. Like I imagine even the camera people were like Oh my God. Like that's, that's a pretty intense thing to say. Like Jax Taylor never went and said, I got to go call my mom after he got caught lying, you know? Yeah. You know, it, it also too, with Joe, I think that one of the good things about her and something that I love about new reality TV personalities, and it's usually a hit or miss. Like you have somebody like, um, Oh my God. Who was the girl who joined orange County? Noella. Noella. Oh no. <laughs> and Noella. She, she tried so hard, you know, and she felt like she knew what the system was. She was like, I'm a shoe in. It's going to be about me. I'm going to go by the creek and I'm going to scream as loud as possible. I'm going to make yes. it dramatic. And it was like we were constantly putting on for the cameras. And then you have somebody like Joe who just unfortunately in her own right is sort of a disaster. But there are a lot of relatable moments for her. I think for the audience, because she is all over the place and she is very raw with her feelings. Like she has been open about bullying. She has been open about all of these things, which I do have to say some of that kind of annoys me and pisses me off a little bit because Joe's like, I feel like I'm being bullied. Raquel says she feels like she's being bullied. And then, but then they Ra both make fun of Katie and Dana on the red carpet. That's what I said. I said, like, listen, because uh, I think you're referring to on the red carpet, yes. uh, Raquel uh, encouraged Joe to post something mean about uh, Katie and Dana's red carpet appearance. And that's what I'm saying is that nobody can escape being nasty and snide. You can act like you're above all of this, but at the end of the day, you're not above all of this. And Schwartz, if anything, yeah, Schwartz led her on to a degree, but also Schwartz should have like. Schwartz should have protected Joe. He knew what he was bringing her into, but at the same time, Joe is well aware of this show. Joe has watched every episode of this show. Joe is not as ignorant as some people would like, like to believe she is. She knows the, the, I always call it like a pit of vipers. You're going into WrestleMania with this crew. You know what you're walking into. And I do feel bad for Joe to a degree and and I think the the biggest thing I feel bad for is it sounds like they were still sleeping together up until like and during filming. That's the bad part. If he was like sleeping with her like right up to that moment, then yeah, he didn't set like clear boundaries of any sort with Joe and I feel bad for that. But also I think Joe plays a part in behind the scenes as much as any of this other like she she doesn't like Katie and I, I mean, like she doesn't. So she, you know, she's going to uh, steer the narrative to a certain point where Katie's a bad person. I, I don't know. It's it's interesting. We, we we've Katie shows up. I mean, sorry, Joe shows up at the reunion. So we're not done with Joe's story. No, and you know, I just got reamed on social media because I talked about Zach Wickham from. I've got Valley. Zach hair. I've got Zach hair right now. Look at how far my oh hair is going. I down. saw. Was it you that posted with yeah, the hair down? Yeah, down, down the hair down, yeah, yeah. You're ridiculous, okay? But now people are questioning whether or not he has a toupee and all of these other things. Like, he's Oh, I like, think that's real hair, right? It's, that's real it's hair. It's his real hair. It is his real hair. But it's like Rodrigo from <laughs> Southern Charm where people are like questioning if he has a toupee. And looking at it, <laughs> Rodrigo. it's funny because being around – the Vanderpump Rules cast, and Sheena sort of got offended one time when I talked about this. They have a ton of groupies. 
And I got called a groupie. People are like, Adam, that's funny. That's the ke- the kettle calling the pot black or pot calling. what I don't know what the fuck the saying is, but it's kettle. That, yeah. Thank you. And they're like, you're the biggest groupie of all. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm the biggest groupie. I love talking about these shows, but I was never up everybody's ass trying to be on a TV show. That is not how I operated. And then. I also, I was very aware. You and I have had these conversations about some of these reality shows. If you would go on them, if you wouldn't, whatever the case is. And I was very aware as to what it consists of and what it took to be on these reality shows because we were friends with all of them. And so was Joe. Joe knew before she came on and filmed this season that she was called a crackhead. She was called all of these things. By by the way, you guys, I, I went back on Joe's social media. Joe called herself a crackhead first. Like I went back like years ago on her social media and she said, some people call me a crackhead way before Katie ever did. Joe used to call herself a crackhead. So I want to like kind of extinguish that thing of Katie just out there out of nowhere calling her a crackhead. Joe used to call herself a crackhead. So, I mean, you you can go on her Instagram and see it for yourself, but I, I just think that is, you know, narratives are so interesting. And once we have like a determined outcome, we'll go back and look for all these context clues of what could possibly have made this happen. But it's right there. If you go and look like she called herself a crackhead and she does have really interesting, intense energy. I, I, but also, I think we all knew and the people around her knew, like I knew people that knew Joe that told me about Joe before she was even on TV and said, yeah, she's she's really energetic. She's She's really nice, but she's a lot like that's what I had heard about Joe before she was on TV. But also what Joe needs to learn now that she is on TV is that the audience is very smart. And like when she's sitting there telling Lala, I did not know that Tom and Raquel were in a relationship. And Lala's like, how would you not know? And she's like, I contrary to what people think, it's like, Joe, no one believes that. That's not even there's not even an inkling of that statement that you're making that sounds believable or true when you're going to big bear you're going out you're going to these different places you're staying you live with tom schwartz right and that was their haven well listen i mean you see all of her accoutrement laying around his apartment like i think she's still I don't even know what there at times. is and it's just I all her like- it's all her little things like her makeup or like you have her products like she is still i think was staying there at times so I mean, listen, I think if Joe had been completely honest about if Joe had been completely honest about that one thing last night, I think the fan base would be 100 percent like for her. Like, I know she has a lot of support right now, but I think if she had been honest with that, it would have been game over. People would have loved Joe forever. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, you know, it's just it's not believable. It's not believable when, again, you know, come to find out Tom and Raquel's main meeting spot was Tom Schwartz's house. Right. She was very much so into the mix of that. They admit yes, that they had- Sandoval went and FaceTimed with Raquel over at Schwartz's. He used to do like, you know, his FaceTime calls, his sexy FaceTime calls over there. You think there's no way that like, I'm sorry, like these, all of these guys and the people in that circle keep secrets. Like they have, they're like, we're getting secrets still from Schwartz. He made out with Sheena 11 years ago. Like these people have kept their secrets and there's a lot of secrets to be held. You know what's so funny too is there was a new thing that came out. Have you have you met Israel? No, no. I mean, I I've been a uh, I've not met him personally. No. Okay, so when I met Israel, he was hosting, and that's when Jason and I went in town to do Sheena's show with her. And when I met Israel, Israel came up to Jason and I said, "I've seen you on YouTube. Just want to introduce myself." Blah blah blah, and. I, I'm so grateful for Lisa. I'm going to be on the show as a main cast member this year and saying all of these things, which uh, I knew, I knew like Israel completely disregarded the fact that Jason and I were in it, right? Like for a long time. And we heard this a lot. And everybody, yeah. came in everybody that worked at Sir or Tom Tom thinks they're going to be on the show, you know? 100%. And you know what's funny is when people start thinking that they're going to get on the show, they treat people a certain way. Like Billy Lee, I never defend Billy because Billy was an asshole. Billy was dude, mean. Billy Lee was mean to me too. Like I I dude, I'm telling you. And I oh god, it's like oh, it's always trust your instincts, you know? Billy Lee acted like her shit didn't stink and she was like rude to me so many times. And I don't even think it was rude to me because 
of me be like, she just didn't give me the time of day. Like, you know, you try to be nice to somebody and they're just like, you can tell they're a certain way. Unless you are a main cast member or somebody that they deem to be cool. We all know people like that in our lives. And she yeah. always was like that whenever I had like interactions, barely gave me the time of day. And I always just thought, oh, well, people were like, oh, maybe she's shy or something. It's like, no, I think she's just an ass unless you're like a semi famous reality person. Yeah, no, she was just, honestly, Billy was just not a nice person. And the thing is, is people would be afraid to say that. And I don't like this because people would be afraid to say that Billy's not a nice person because then Billy leads in with, okay, then that makes you transphobic. And that is not the same thing. No. You cannot be, I can think that you're an asshole and that has nothing to do with how you identify, what gender you are or who you like, who you no, love. No, this has nothing to do with, I think Billy nothing. is an attractive woman. I don't care about, I, that is nothing. It's just when somebody's a jerk to you or just somebody doesn't like even acknowledge your presence, that hurts. Like that sucks. That's nothing to do with that at all. Smash yeah. that like button, folks. Yes. Let's smash it. Smash that. But also, no, you, so, know who, you know who else like faith Faith, who is now re-entering the legal pool, used to come into pump, and she was always so rude and be like, I want this table, I'm cast, I'm this, I'm that. Faith was also kind of that way where it got to her head. And the funny thing is, is if you meet Stassi, you meet Sheena, you see Lala, you see the Toms, when they walk into the they're places, nice as hell. They're so, so nice. nice. You know, yeah. so I, I just wanted to add that in there. But going back to it, we obviously have the end of the beach day where Tom gets out. Tom is saying a lot of shit under his breath, by the way. And, you know, I can see where Ariana, I, I see Ariana's point more than anybody's. I'm not quite understanding. And I have a theory why Lala and Sheena are sort of turning on Ariana the way that they are. And I think it's either one, because somebody needed to go against Ariana because that's not what people were expecting. And we still have to make a show and make it good. Or okay. two, it's just the simple fact that even though Sheena played that jealous or not jealous game last night on Watch What Happens Live, this is reality TV. Everybody wants to be the top dog, the number one guy in the group. And the fact of the matter is, is Ariana is the one who's getting all of these opportunities right now. And I think there is an element of, well, fuck you, Ariana. Yeah. Well, not well. I hate that it's gotten to fuck you, Ariana. But I was thinking about this when I woke. I was thinking about this when I woke up this morning. Is that thing about this? Like Lala did her birth announcement on Amazon Live, her gender reveal on Amazon Live, right? That revolves around Lala's actual life. But like Ariana is getting work where she gets to play characters. She gets to be on Broadway. She gets to be a host. She doesn't have to rely on her personal life. She doesn't have to real. She doesn't have to make money right now off of personal revelations. And Lala and Sheena and people like that, they're still stuck in that thing where Lala has to make money off of her own family. Lala has to. And I, I think that sometimes might be a frustrating place to be because it would be nice probably to protect a certain like have a certain amount of privacy after all of these seasons of sharing things. I don't think it ever forgives Lala from being what I call on my show producer's pet. She's a producer's pet. Yeah, you can give Lala the ball and she'll do anything. She'll do a scene with Joe. She'll do a scene with Tom Sandoval. And I just think it's wild because we still, you say we have to make a reality show, but we can make a great reality show still calling out the bullshit of Tom Sandoval and uh, to a lesser degree, Tom Schwartz. Like I like Tom Schwartz, you know, like I like, but there, we're still not calling out like the obvious here. Like, why, why can't we then have a scene where Lala meets with Joe? She doesn't believe that he, she didn't know about Raquel and Tom. And then the rest of the episode, we really track down that fact. We really track down like, Hey, I think you're lying. Talk to other people about it. Let's, let's pull that out into the light. That to me is fascinating and it's real. Like, why are you lying, Joe? Why are you lying? Like, are you protecting Schwartz because you love him? We can get to that Joe being in love with Schwartz through that scene. I know I sound like a crazy person right now. I'm just so tired of Sandoval going, pins and batteries, dude. Ariana didn't pay a bill to save her life, dude. She didn't say, uh, this furniture, I bought all this furniture, dude. I don't give a F about the furniture in the house. I don't care. And also, I like, Ariana can stay there. Be a man. Go, like, shack up with Schwartz like you did with Rachel. Like, give me a, like, when you wanted to flirt with Rachel over FaceTime. Go stay with Schwartz for a little bit. I'm sorry, but, like, it makes me angry. It, it really makes me angry because then everybody turns against Ariana when it's like, Lala and, and Sheena to a lesser degree, you don't have to do this. 
I don't find it. And I think it like chips away at people's like actually liking Lala at the end of the day. I don't think it works for Lala. I think that it's kind of like a balancing act because I look at Lala and I understand where I like somebody who can unapologetically be like, you know what? This doesn't work for you. I don't care. I'm not going to let that sway how I behave. I'm going to do what I want to do. And I agree with that. And that's what she's doing. Like, even when Katie was like, wait a minute, why would you go out with Joe? She's like, because I wanted to. And it's like, I, okay. I agree. You, you're a grown ass woman and a mom. Yeah. And you can do whatever you want to do. But then there are moments where I feel like Lala tries to be so strong, and she, and especially in her deliveries and her opinions. And then I think that she's missing the mark, especially like with the Ariana thing. Like, how did we flip from Tom Sandoval being like the biggest douchebag in the world to all of a sudden being like, okay, well, it's time. We have to kind of switch this up. And even if that's the case and you want to forgive Tom Sandoval, I agree, you know, time heals all wounds. That's what they say. But then that does not mean that you have to go after Ariana and she's all of a sudden an asshole because when Ariana was crying to Lala and Sheena last night and she's like, I didn't do anything to him. Yeah. That kind of hit. I was like, well, we, we, we finally got to see Ariana cry. Like, it's so interesting that people complain about Ariana for so many different reasons. Oh, she's not crying about this. We finally saw her cry last night. People are still going to find a way to bitch and moan. And mm -hmm. somebody commented, I read up here of like, Ariana's boring. Well, let her be boring then. Like, I mean, honestly, I, I, I might get a lot of blowback on here, but like, okay, well, everybody's talking about Ariana. Ariana isn't making herself the subject of the conversation. People are making Lala and Sheena and Tom. They're making Ariana the center of the conversation. She's always doing, she's done exactly what she said she was going to do. She didn't want to do scenes with Tom. She wasn't leaving the house until she found a new house. She told us all of this at the reunion last year, but... I think people are coming at Ariana so hard because then they would have to actually have storylines themselves. So Lala last night, and this is where I might get some blowback and I'm sorry. Lala is taking us behind the scenes of her pregnancy journey. Did right. everybody find that the most fascinating story or did they find it like an interruption in the actual action of the story? Because the story has been so focused on Ariana by people like Lala. That's my curiosity is if we give up the Ariana storyline, where do they go? Like, where is Lala going to go? We're not seeing Lala date anybody. Lala is almost like Bethany Franklin at this point, or Kyle Richardson, where she wants to be in control of questioning people. She doesn't want any kind of blowback on herself because she's in her soft era. It's, but a it's like a runaway. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's like using other people and she's like, she's trying to paint herself as a reliable narrator. And I just don't think she has that capacity because we've seen Lala backtrack so many seasons. We've seen her be so messy and she's like the first one in any personal scene. She'll cry within 30 seconds, Lala when it's yeah. her personal story, but then she'll yell at everybody else about their personal stories. I'm just very confused about Lala as a character. I think she thinks she's a producer on this show. And I'm curious if producers are encouraging her to be a producer on this show. Because it doesn't make, sometimes her character doesn't make sense, her character arc. Yeah, no, and I also think too, like, that's a great question because Lala recently, I don't know if it was a, I think it was, it was uh, a podcast episode with Heather McDonald from Juicy Scoop, where she said, yes, I was nervous going into the season because the storyline heavily surrounded somebody who has never had a storyline. And I'm like, that's a dick thing to say. Yeah, it is. That's what I'm saying. Like, Lala will say the most hurtful things and then say that she's soft, say that she's in her soft era. And then if somebody questions Lala about something, Lala will tear up within the first 15 seconds. And Lala is like in person, one of the nicest people you'll meet. But then yeah. she has this persona that she puts on. And I just sometimes feel like that's got to be exhausting. And I feel like you chip away at the audience's confidence in you. Like, I don't know if I want Lala to have the ball at this point. Like, you know, I'd rather I, I it's it's really. And then Sheena, Sheena is like one of those people that can go either way. And it's like, I sometimes worry about Lala being in Sheena's ear because Sheena will just kind of listen to whoever's in front of her. I, I don't know. It's very confusing. And I feel like maybe I'm on the wrong side of this. Maybe everybody is like team Lala 
and I, it's like, I don't dislike Lala. I've, I like her so much. I just feel like this is so weirdly scripted in her head. Like, Oh, I'll just yeah. go against Ariana and Ariana's not doing anything. She's sitting there on a beach. And by the way, this is three and a half months later. Of course you wouldn't want to be in a scene with your ex that cheated on you. Like, of course you wouldn't. She like, of course it's going to come out abrasive and snotty because she, she was lied to for that long. Like, I feel like that's a normal reaction, but maybe I'm crazy. No, I also think too, like with, you know, Ariana being as successful as she is right now with James now, you know, headline headlining the neon carnival at Coachella and doing all of these massive things. I think that Vanderpump rules is sort of nearing its end. I think that it's like the Hills, like everybody is getting way too successful. They have other things that are keeping them prioritized. And I I'm personally thinking that Vanderpump rules is coming to an end in that. Lala Adam, no way, dude. The I, there's, there's no way, Adam, because the ad, I, I do. We talk about the ad revenue is so high on this show. Yeah. Like it is still getting great ratings. They could do away with half that cast and you will still still see a show called Vanderpump rules. It just might not have, uh, it makes too much money. So like at the end of the day, things are by design to make money. TV shows. They're, they're right. meant to sell commercials. Right. And this right now is getting a very high ad rate. They're not like some like it's not like the Sopranos that they're walking away artistically. No, they're going to run that thing into the ground. And they were able to launch the Valley off of it. And the Valley's doing really well, but they're not going to just throw. I mean, listen, I could be completely wrong, but I, I do think there is a possibility that Ariana leaves of her own accord this season. Like, I do wonder if on the reunion, if Ariana leaves, I do wonder if she quits at the reunion. I, yeah, I have because this. They're saying that something happens that's never happened before. Yeah, because I just wonder if Ariana at the reunion says, listen, I didn't sign up for this. Like, this is like ridiculous. You guys, you know, I saw how you behaved. And remember, they watched the final seven episodes right before they went into the reunion. Like they had to watch it all in a couple of days before they went into the reunion. I'm sure Ariana was livid hearing and watching some of the shit that Lala, sorry, some of the stuff that Lala did on camera talking crap about Ariana. Like imagine how angry you would be watching Lala all of a sudden say all this crap about you. You had no idea she was saying. So I'm sure Ariana went in there heated. So whatever happens in those final moments, I mean, in my dream of dreams, I could see Ariana being like, screw you guys. I quit. But at the same time, I don't think anybody would quit that show because it's good money. You know, do you think, would it be bad for Ariana? You know how like some people, it's like you get ahead of yourself and, you know, like you start booking all of these gigs, but don't forget how you got launched in the spotlight to begin with, which was the show. Like, would it be a rookie mistake for Ariana to think, okay, well, I have all of these other opportunities. You know what? Screw Vanderpump Rules. I'm going to walk away. Would that be a dumb mistake or would that be great for her? Because I'm kind of thinking if she can film everything else and do all of her other projects like she did this year around Vanderpump Rules, film for the three months, collect her yeah. $800,000 contract, exactly. still be all over social media. Why not? Well, okay. So for them, like from your own personal mental health, it's not good, but for collecting a paycheck for putting yourself in harm's way for three months. Yeah. But it also at the end of the day, like it'll like the, the C level will like even like the sea the change will even out eventually we will get past this Ariana Tom thing. But even last night watching Tom at that singles party, you just get douche chills watching Sandoval now. Like it didn't, like I know some people it was always that way for, but not for me. Like I always liked Sandoval and now I just get creeped out watching him like at a singles party. And I feel like having Ariana there almost reminds people of just how douchey that guy can be. And I'm just curious. He just doesn't seem to have learned anything yet. Like, I'm curious if in the break of filming Vanderpump Rules between season 11 and season 12, if it happens, like, I really hope he does some real soul searching so we can see a new Tom Sandoval, because if not, I mean, it's going to be so douchey to watch that dude move. And we know he has a girlfriend now, so the new girlfriend would have to agree to film. So we would meet her. Oh, she, all she posts is him. She's buying for oh, that. She's ready. So she's ready. <laughs> she wants that so bad. It's not even funny. And the funny, the, I guess the one funny part about it is that her social media is private, but like I added her as a friend and she immediately accepted it. And then this morning I was walking the dogs and I saw where she had a new story up and I look at it and who is it? It's Tom Sandoval. And I'm like, every time I click on her shit, 
it is always Tom Sandoval. That is now, this is her identity in a sense because every single day, Tom Sandoval. And to be honest with you, and I really, really enjoy Katie. I think that Tom Sandoval, Tom Schwartz, and Katie, I just at this point can kind of do without. Well, I mean, listen, I think there's an argument to be had that I could do without each one of them at like a point. Like, I mean, I, I think Tom and Katie thing, what they're trying to do, and they did it really awkwardly last night of like, hey, we can have fun as a divorce couple. We can compete over the same lady. Isn't this fun? And it, it wasn't fun and funny. It was just kind of creepy. I was like, yeah. I'm creeped out by both of you guys completely. Um, and also I'm seeing a lot of team Lala in your comments. And it's like, what are you necessarily a team of? Like, are you, is that just mean you're a team of the producers? Like, I mean, Lala is a great character, but I think there's so much hypocrisy hypocrisy in Lala. You can't be the one that stands on the mountain determining right and wrong when you don't seem to really know right and wrong yourself. Like, I think she's very entertaining, but at the same time, let's get into Lala's actual life. You can't be on the mountain saying that I don't trust any of my cast members. That's a very real feeling. But then why, why are you there? Like, you're not like the ruler of the Vanderpump kingdom. Like you got to get into the mess. You can't act like you're above all of the mess. And that's every quote. I, I mean, she did a whole press tour directly after the reunion. So whatever happened at the reunion, she felt the need to go out there and do a full court press trying to pump out as much information as she can before that reunion airs. So I'm really curious what we see when you got to be like kind of recognizing the fact that she went on every like, you know, entertainment tonight, access Hollywood, Jeff Lewis, like she did all of these things. No other cast member did this. Ariana's not out there talking about Lala. Lala's out there talking about Ariana. So something must have happened where she felt the need to put out as much information as she could. And I wonder if that's to protect herself, but I think Lala is a really awesome character. I just am so confused by her moves. And she says like, Oh, other people move in such weird ways. I think Lala moves in really weird ways. I also really like, I am so curious because I'm a numbers person. I'm so curious how Lala was able to afford a $3.1 million home six months after buying Dude, a that's what I home. Sorry, I got so excited. Okay, so she makes fun of Ariana for buying a one point seven million dollar home in the hills, right? And this right. is what I'm saying: is Ariana, like, by herself, it's like she's she's great and all that stuff, but like everybody keeps talking about her. Like Lala's the one that points out her house, one point seven million dollar house in the hills, but then Lala buys a three point one million. Like I know the podcast is doing well, but my God. Why would you spend? And then she bought the Palm Springs house with the send it to Daryl t-shirt money. So like, I worry, like, is she real? Like that's part of it too. Is like, is she trying to like stir up as much as she can because she needs this show to continue? Like, where is all of the money coming from? Like Ariana, we see she, everybody says, oh, she got all these brand deals. Well, she's being responsible with her money, <laughs> like a $1.7 million home as opposed, I'm not good with math, but that seems like a lot less than 3.1. Yeah. So I think that you can factor into a mortgage. I think it's, what do they say? It's like, you can factor reality show earnings into a mortgage. No. I mean, but a $3.1 million, that has to be three, six, nine, twelve, twelve. 12. That has her mortgage with California prices and everything is easily over $12,000 a month. And Oh, easily, easily. So it's probably like 12 to $15,000 a month. But what I don't Wait. get, is she was saying that first of all you're going through the IUI process, right? Well, yeah, and some people are saying divorce settlement, but remember she was never married to Randall. Yeah, and Randall doesn't have money, so remember those two things when you think about any money Randall's giving. Yeah, and she she had the IUI process that's easily six figures, and then from there she has talked about on Amazon Live and also her podcast where she is fighting Randall for custody. And she said that she spent well over six figures. So that's a lot of money right there. And then you go buy the most expensive house out of the entire cast. Well, I'm reading one of the comments. Sarah says she makes money off her podcast and a lot off of apparel, makeup deals, et cetera. Okay, great. Amazing. But then why come at Ariana for all the brand deals she's getting? Like if right. your hand is in that honey pot as well, why complain about anybody else? Why complain? Like, why is that then a storyline? 
why wouldn't you then come back of like, oh, really, Lala? Or just even like Sandoval, like, you talk about me all the time on your podcast, dude. Or, you know, R- Rachel giving her the send it to Daryl line. Like, these are things that it's so funny. It comes off very hypocritical to me. And I know some people are just like Team Lala regardless, but like, I'm Team Lala, but I also look at the reality of the situation. Like, I'm just trying to understand it. I'm trying to understand this. Like, please just tell me, Lala, that this is just a business move and you're not really this cold and callous towards people. Uh, oh, it's you know, totally a that's, business move. that's what I'm really hoping. And I, I don't think she'll ever be able to admit that. But that's the only thing that would make sense for me, because I know Lala genuinely does care about people. Um, Toaster JB said, is Lala getting paid the most on Vanderpump Rules? No. So Tom Vanderpump Sandoval, Rules, it's. You, well, actually, I mean, I don't know what the bonuses are, but. Vanderpump Rules is very different. Like if you go to Southern Charm or Housewives or whatever, they negotiate contracts and it depends on what you deliver. Vanderpump Rules is a tier system. So the first season you make three to 5,000. After that, it goes to 25,000. That goes to 75. And you don't start making real money until your third season, fourth season. That's when you start. Well, making and money. a lot of people don't realize this, you know, and, and you know this as well, is that certain like main cast members, they got paid only for the days that they showed up to film. Like they weren't even on a, on an actual full contract. Like mm-hmm. we're talking even a couple of years ago, you would be shocked at the cast members that actually were not paid a actual contract fee. That was and they were di- they, Well, yeah, they were day players. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you would be shocked. Like I was shocked when I, I was like, no way. Like these people were only paid when they showed up to film and they weren't on a season contract. And I think that's like, they remember these throw, these shows don't throw money at cast members maybe on vanderpump rules it's going to get to that point because there's so much money involved now but also with all the lawsuits coming at this show you know who knows they probably are just saving money for those but also even what to what ryan's saying too there are some people who have been on since season one who are still on in their day rate which is wild but okay Speaking of this, I think that we covered the main, main points of Vanderpump Rules um, for the most part. I'm trying to think. We had what, the pa- cringe... paintball? Paint- paintball? Yeah, paintball. I mean, <laughs> paint- like you said, there were, there were way too many events <laughs> at this thing. And um, then I was like, okay, once we got like 40 minutes in, I was like, okay, I'm ready to see the Valley. Speaking of the Valley, I got to say, I think that especially myself included, definitely Peter Madrigal is biting his tongue right now. And he's kicking himself in the ass. I have been pleasantly surprised by the Valley, even though I feel like Jax pre-produces a lot, like with the Kristen thing and asking about the baby journey to inviting Alex to the guys night. I feel like Jax is pre-producing a shit ton, but I really, I'm enjoying the cast. I think that they're just like, especially who's the guy from, what was he on? iCarly? Oh, Daniel Bucco. Yeah. I'm like, He's just such a funny, fun. Yeah, he seems like a nice guy and his wife seems like a nice lady. And they I mean, they just had twins. Um, So like that's a couple I pull for. Uh, But it's wild because the Jackson Britney stuff. I will say this. What was really hard last night to watch was the cruise stuff. The stuff with like kids really it made me so uh, sad. And I really hope the best for Cruz. And no matter how I feel about Jax and all that, you, you kind of sit there and watch that scene of watching their kid, you know, work with a, a speech therapist. And I, I teared up. I mean, it really hit me in the heartstrings um, because it's so wild to think about like those moments in an adult's life. And guys, I know it's like, oh, these are this show might be for old people. I'm old. So I was like, hey, all right. But We're like watching now. that. But then it's like you watch like then a dinner scene where they're fighting about racism and all of this stuff. And you're like, whoa, it's like whiplash of and like Dodie and Jax, whether you like them or not, they are entertaining to watch on reality television because, you know, Jax especially is very like a big hypocrite. And it is wild to watch Britney like admit things like she kept that couple afloat. She brought money in and it's really weird now. Yeah, it's weird now. Like, and then to realize they weren't, they didn't even have, they had sex, what, like one time or two times in a year? Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's really, that's a piece of information that I could have done my whole life without knowing. But now the fact that I know it, I'm like, whoa. Like, think about the reality of that situation. Think about Jax Taylor not having, like, a character that was built on having sex with people 
has allegedly only had sex two times in a year. Like to me, that was a piece of thing. And I was like, Oh God, like I find Kristen and Jax to be and Brittany. You can tell that they are the vets in this show and that they are the driving force behind how everything works. But I was talking to Kristen yesterday. I was texting her about this because I was like, I just, I'm not understanding when the Michelle girl and you know, one, I don't know how all of this got turned around on Janet. I think that's effed up. But then two, I'm like, see, I'm watching Jasmine and, you know, Michelle and all of these people telling Kristen she should just apologize. And I'm like, apologize for what? Well, it was weird. Well, I think, well, I think Michelle was trying to have a reality show moment and she was probably encouraged to do that. But I, you know, Kristen, listen, Kristen, Kristen's fault was bringing up something she shouldn't have brought when they were talking about something else. So she throws this out there as bait. And I think, listen, I love Janet and uh, I love Jason, uh, her husband. But the thing that I think, like, I think there's a world in which like we all talk trash with our friends on text messages. There could have been like, Oh, like, LOL. I bet Michelle's a Republic, you know, like I, like we, Janet even said it like, Oh, she said this, don't say gay law. And, and I said, you know, like, I think there's a world in which somebody was like teasing or joking around, or you got to be careful. And Kristen took that and ran with it and threw it out at a very inopportune moment to almost kind of save herself in that moment. And yeah, it was weird that like, everybody's like, apologize, Kristen, and not actually getting to the root of the issue at all. Like it could have been a great convert. Like it's not good for reality television, but in a normal world, you would want to get to the conversation of like the don't say gay law or like the actual, what was behind it. But then the racist stuff with Kristen Doty being fired from Vanderpump rules gets brought up. And then we kind of drop that. I was like, Oh my God, we're in the third episode and we're bringing this up. And so I thought the fourth episode was going to be all about that and faith and the past and they kind of just skated right past it in a way like i was I like oh think, okay we're just we're just going on yeah i don't think that they're gonna bring faith up to be honest with you i think that that's too much of a liability well right now. and also since the lawsuit last week i mean that that all popped off her you know faith went on her podcast and you know uh, i i interviewed faith like years ago right when i first started the podcast in like 2020 i think like it was in the first year of doing this and i remember it was during the pan- pandemic it was during, uh, it was like right when the firing happened with Kristen and Stasi. I talked to her and it's, it's just wild. Like, I, I can't believe, I don't know. Like, I also want to believe in forgiveness. I also want to believe in like people realizing that they've done wrong and why they did it and what they did, you know? So it is interesting. These, these mistakes can follow you the, the rest of your life sometimes. Um, yeah. So yeah, I guess they're not going to bring up faith, but I just can't believe they brought it up at all. Yeah. Like, I can't believe that that even got left in the show, to, to be honest with you. Well, and, you know, also to kind of chime into this really quick, I think that who knows if they didn't talk about it and then they just re-edited it, like, after the lawsuit got dropped. But then even with, with Kristen, I got to say this. She is a lot of things. She is kooky. She's funny. She's fun to be around. She's a great time. Aside from the time that she lied about hooking up with Jax, I don't know how much of a liar she is. And I remember one time talking to Zach at TomTom. Tom, and Zach was going through it because he was on the outs. Brittany Cartwright ended up pushing him out. Jax pushed him out because I think Zach went on Twitter and started like saying shit and like clapping back at both of them. And I think that they both just agreed to like ice him out. And now all of a sudden he's on the show. But when I see him covering his face and I see things that are being said, I think that this is the classic introduction to Vanderpump Rules. And I believe I said this last week. It's like, now you're learning. You said this. She's bringing it up. And you're like, oh, my God, this was never meant for TV. But so now you're lying. Kind of like (laughs) Joe, like lying about like the whole. I didn't know that Rachel. Well, you have you have a dinner table where everybody's there. Let's get to the heart of the matter right now. Let's not leave this table until we figure out exactly what happened. I always like that. It's like, we can figure this out right now. Like Zach, what did you do? Say it right now. So everybody can hear it. Okay. Janet, what did you do? We could clear this up right now, but like, you know, I just find it funny how they let these things dissipate. I mean this and Luke, Kristen's boyfriend, man, Luke's Luke's like a quiet guy, but he's like, he gets in there. Luke was the first guy to stand up at the dinner table. He was like, I'm out of here. Let's go. Like this guy is, uh, you, I, you, you got You can't push him. 
Um, it's kind of like Luke kind of reminds me of James Kennedy. Like the first time that James got into a fight, I think it was at Planet Dailies or something like that. He got into the fight with Tom Sandoval. And I remember I was working that next day and Tom Sandoval came on in to work, to work the bar with like a face full of makeup and he was covering his black eye and everything. But for James, I like James has a temper, but James also is a fighter and he will beat somebody's ass. And I look at Luke and I see him as this kind of like meek, quiet little guy. And then I see these little spurts of the temper and like the little attitude. And I'm like, oh, you're one of those silent creepers of a person who's really fucking terrifying because if somebody pisses you off, like there's no, you're, I don't like people <laughs> like that. Like, I don't like to question. I like Luke. Let me, because I know people see this. So let me kind of make sure I say well, this. Well, no, right. that's like, it's, it's so hard. Like, it's like, I like, I like all of these people, but we're talking about what we see on the show right. and what they say on podcasts and stuff like that. So there's a difference. Like we, we have to talk about what we see. You right. know, but like exactly. I like I I like Luke a lot. Like I've talked to Luke a couple of times, but it is funny how he comes off on the show. I was like, this you give this guy an axe, you're dead. Yeah, well, and that's the thing too is like I think that for him, he's so one. It's funny because it's almost like Kristen doesn't have to break the fourth wall on the show when she's having this dinner or date with Luke and she's ordering her martini and stuff. And she's like, I need to stay in California right now because I don't want to move again. I moved three times. That's not the reason you're staying in California. You know that you need to stay in California for the show because this is a lot of money for you and you're going to yeah. ride this wave. Yeah. Which, <laughs> yes. But also for Luke, he's not used to this shit. This is not how he operates. And he doesn't, he's not from a world where you go out and you try to trust people and have a good time and you get ambushed with exes That's and, you know, that's why on my recaps, I always say, pay attention to Luke this season because it's, he's going to be the one to watch because he's not used to any of this. Yeah. Kristen's like a pro at this. Where's Kristen's like, Oh, you want me to take on a whole dinner table? Yeah, let's do it. Like, I'll do it. Yeah. You want me to throw out a race? Yeah, I'll do it. Like Kristen has been in the shit. Kristen is like, Kristen has been in Nom. She was in earlier seasons of Vanderpump rules. So she knows her way around a fight. But Luke, I mean, this has got to be wildly shocking for Luke. So I think comedically, sometimes Luke works just because you're like, oh, my God, his head, you can tell is just spinning. Like, he's like, Jax, will you unblock me now? And then, like, Jax is bringing Kristen Doty's ex to, like, a game. Like, it's hysterical. That's hysterical. In what world would any of your friends ever think that it's okay to bring your ex in front of your new boyfriend? In what world? And would you Never. ever buy the fact that it's like, I was trying to be a peacemaker, man. I was trying to bridge the, like, nobody asked you to bridge anything. It's a reality show. The funny thing is, like, for these people on the reality shows, especially Vanderpump Rules, it's like, it's like hot. I always call it a game of hot potato. Who's got the hot potato? When you have the hot potato, you're it. And the shit is going to come down on you. So everybody's throwing around the potato because they don't want the shit to come down on them. But it's like everything is game. Your past is game. Like you don't know when ex-boyfriends or ex-girlfriends are going to get brought into the situation. I mean, all like think about Miami girl. Like think about Miami girl bringing, being brought back in front of Sandoval and Sandoval being like, I got to run. Like he just leaves work. That's what makes these shows fascinating. But even like people in the comments saying like, oh, I love Brock and Lala this season. Well, I think you love them because they're shit stirs. Like, yeah. and that's a, that's a valid reality show character, but it's not a realistic character. Like it's, it's a, it's a, it's a plot driven character, a producer driven character. And it's like, yeah, I get that. But it's, 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 there's not a lot of reality there. Well, you know, what's funny too. Did you watch, watch what happens live last night? Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah. By the way, remember you shared your location with Sheena uh, last yes, last yes. week. Oh, and she Sheena brought Sheena brought up the uh, location sharing. She texted me. Oh, Jason just said it's Margaret Joseph's birthday. Hit the like button, guys! Come on, I'm gonna hurt myself if you do not hit that like do button. Do not right say now. that. What is? I mean, I don't even understand the like button thing. Why is it like important to hit the like button? What does it do? Because it's is it. it let's hit the like button. Oh, she said. I love how many more I've gotten this week. Ha ha. With like the heart thing, because I was like, <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and share. Like, like I said, but, um, I, I noticed last night when Brock started getting a little cheeky on watch what happens live and making his little comments. Sheena looks yeah. at him like, Oh dude. I got Yes. Did Sheena not look a little nervous last night? Like she kept she, checking in with Andy and every time Brock's, I said that too. I was like, Oh my God. Sheena kind of seems like she, is like a little nervous, you know, like she had a I nervous laughter more than other. She doesn't know what the hell he's going to say. And she also, but 
I think that instead of trying to control what he says at the core of it, you know that he's a good guy. Like, do you remember that douchebag guy that Stasi brought on Patrick that told Lisa she has yeah. a great ass? How like, dare you talk about my rump like that, Patrick? How dare you? Right. Exa and he said things to be a dick and also for shock value. And it was just mean, nasty, whatever. I think, and I would want to keep him censored and quiet, but I think also at the root of it, he was just not a good person. For Brock, I think Brock is an amazing guy. So if he wants to have these little moments, I feel like Sheena wants to control them a little bit because she doesn't know and she wants to be ahead of it because she's been playing this game for a long time. But it's like, let Brock just have his moment, get a little cheeky. You, you know, he's still a great guy and the audience loves him. It's you can okay. tell Brock loves it. I, you know what the one thing I will say about Brock? I am, I, I watch, I'm watching him like put like, like uh concrete, like flooring in his like yes. new house. I love the Brock home renovation uh, Instagrams. Like I'm not a handyman myself. So I'm sitting there going, this is what Brock should be doing. He should be doing home renovation. Like he's great at it. I love watching those videos. This is guys for just to kind of show you what um, Ryan's talking about. This is what Brock has been doing. He's been posting these videos like this where he's just, I doing love it. <laughs> I, have like, no, I, I, I would never be able to do any of too. this. <laughs> what do you, he was like, I've got to do it. I've got five hours. I can't do a Brock imitation. So I always do him as an Irish man. I, I've got to do this for five hours. Cause we're leaving for New York in the morning. So he woke up at like four in the morning to do this. Yeah. Yeah. And so I mean, Brock needs a job. <laughs> he's like, I mean, he's, he's just always, you know, like he did all of this. He, I, I really, I, yeah, I, I watched the whole project. I was like, so in, I was fascinated by this. I was like, wow. And by the way, don't go to paintball, make the like Sandoval and Schwartz come over and like, have you lay foundation down. Let's see Sandoval get his nails dirty. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That'll never happen. But you know, wait, 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 here's a question. Do we think. Are Sheena and Brock in it for the long haul? What was that thing that Sheena said at one time that said, you're not going to be, I'm not going to be with you for forever. Was that on yeah, the, it, it was, on, show, it was right? on the mid season trailer. It was on the mid season yeah. trailer. And like, is this like, I get nervous. Like, cause I don't know. Also like, you know, when we've talked to these people in real life, like they've lied to my face. Like, I don't know ever if I what anybody is saying is yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, Ten Sean said she was completely innocent. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. But like, sometimes I get nervous. Uh, you know, like I, I get nervous. And uh, like, I love Sheena. Like Sheena cracks me up because Sheena, like we said last week, she's so unapologetically herself or she doesn't even realize what makes her a great reality show character. Um, but I do get nervous in terms of that relationship. I mean, I get nervous in terms of all reality show relationships. I mean, I hope they're good, but I just got worried once I saw that mid-season trailer and then I get nervous because I know Sheena does pay attention to all the public reaction and, you know, she gets hit pretty hard. I mean, she does some like pretty insane things, but she gets hard. So I wonder, especially how she's taking people's reactions to Brock as well. Sheena, though, too, cares a lot about what people think and how people interpret her and how people view her. She really, really does. Yeah. And as you know, one of the sweetest people ever. She is just a genuine, genuine sweetheart. But she does care a lot. And I think that that's probably one of her weaker spots, especially being on reality TV. Whereas, like, I'm sure all of them care what people think. Even Lala saying, I don't care. You guys think I'm an asshole this year? Yeah. Let me just clue you in. I don't care. It's like, no, you do. But we're putting on this like armadillo skin right now that you can't penetrate. And that's what we're putting out there. So it makes you look like a tough ass. But really, when you go home, you are processing a lot of these things. And she hides that in my opinion, whereas like Sheena just wears it on her sleeve. She's like, I want everyone, you know, like Brett Kenyon, who do you, have you met Brett? Yeah. Many times. Yeah. Okay. So Brett just chewed me out the other day, like literally ripped me a new asshole was so upset with me. What, for what? And because he said, so, and I talked about it in a video. Brett, Brett's chewed me out before uh, in defending Sheena a long time ago. Like I've been on the receiving end of Brett uh, angry at me once. Uh, I used to, the, the thing is, is like when I worked at, oh, when I worked at Tom, Tom, like Logan and Brett, first of all, they always fought, <laughs> but then I know, I know Logan would pick on Brett so hard <laughs> all the time and they would fight. And then Logan would come to me. And I remember one time Ken and Lisa were there and Logan's like, Adam, 
why is my section in the back? And I said, because like I came in first, I'm taking all of the tables, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to be in the back. Starts yelling and getting like, why, annoyed. Did, you, why did you get, why did you give me all the table? Why did you give uh, uh, all the tables in the back? I can't believe that. That was Ken my kid walked in and Ken said, if you don't fucking like it, then get the fuck out. And I was like, so I got oh, so, so nervous and low. Oh, like, no, out. And then Brett ended up because Brett was at Tom's pool party and he ended yeah. up saying in an interview <laughs> that Lisa and Lisa and them encouraged us to drink like while working and stuff like that. And I said, that is not true. We, when we worked at Tom, Tom pump, whatever, if you got caught drinking, your ass was fired. Like, you were not encouraged to drink. If you're on a show and you're not getting paid for it and you show up to somebody's party and, you know, people are passing out shots and there just happens to be cameras there, that's no different than just going to somebody's house party when there's no cameras there. So what I said was we were never encouraged. And he, I think, got his, I think he got ripped apart by Lisa or Pandora or somebody and then messaged me and was like, I know this is how you make your money, but this is really fucked up and this... And I'm like, that's, yeah, no, they, it's, yeah, not. Yeah. it's fucked up of you to say that about them because that's not true. And I've worked around them way longer than you. And then I also see going back to Sheena, where Sheena admitted that she had to cut out a friend because of Katie Maloney. Come to find out that friend was Brett Kenyon. Because Brett, well, yeah, Brett, Brett wrote a Brett, Brett wrote a song about Katie Maloney last season. He did a song, like a really like kind of mean song about Katie that like towards the end of last season, because Kate, I, I don't even remember the full story now, but like Brett was like, I don't know. It's one of those, like I I've always liked Brett a lot. Um, but like, it is interesting to Me see too. how many friend groups, like I was surprised to see him at Sandoval's birthday party. I was like, wait, what? Like I was always, I thought he was Sheena's friend. I thought he was like, when it's, we it's, like, talked these people, about this, him and I talked about this when Sandoval broke and he was so mad at Tom and Raquel, he wasn't talking to either one of them. And I think Tom even wanted to give Brett Raquel wanted to give Raquel Brett's number because Raquel wanted to reach out from the mental health facility. Facility, yeah. Yeah. And like I, I'm watching it and I see him show up there, which is fine, but he used to always watch Sheena's cats. The thing is, is like what I found when working at these places is that a lot of people think because they're around it that they're contracted to be in it and they're two very separate things there are the people who work work and actually that's how they survive and there are the people who show up like mickey and minnie at disney world and their characters like tom and tom like but you are not that so you don't get to be that you have to work your ass off put your head and nose to the ground and grind because you are not contracted with a half a million dollar salary to fuck shit up that's just not the case yeah yeah, it's, I mean, the, the van, I always call it the Vanderpump ecosystem. Like, you know, it's like you have the main cast and then you have like the friends of that actually make the show. And then you have the friends of friends of that barely make the show at all, but they're like hanging around for dear life. Yeah. And I just always like, I mean, I just find that interesting because at any point you could be in, you could be called up to the roster. You could be in the pipeline. Like Joe was around for years. Joe got called up to this season. She's in the big leagues now. Like, so it's really interesting. And then now we have the Valley. So we have more opportunity for more of these like, C-level players in the Vanderpump universe to get called up to bat in terms of being characters on this show, you know? And by the way, when I say C-level, I don't mean that they're bad people. I just mean that they never were on the initial show. Uh, but it is interesting, all of these kind of like hanger-ons in that ecosystem. Because I yeah. believe really bad things, like the show might get you like, like Instagram followers and maybe some deals here and there and maybe some money eventually. But I think it does something wild to your psyche. This isn't how... This isn't how we treat people, really. It's not how we should even be encouraged to treat people. And, you know, like you guys have real friends. It's most likely not how we treat people out of our 30s, you know, like yeah. when you're in your 20s. But these people are like nearing 40 and above and they're still doing the same things. And I sometimes feel like we haven't scratched the Like I was thinking like, I, you know what? I bet Schwartz is made out with Lala at some point. Wait, wait till that gets revealed. Like, I, I bet, I bet they've kept all of these, like, you know, we're just finding out about Sheena now. Like, I bet at some point we're going to find out something insane that'll blow our hairs back. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it is true. It's like, in real life, no, people don't act like my friends. I don't have friends like this. I just don't, you know, but also we're not getting paid to interact with each other. So, and people would not watch Vanderpump Rules would not be on for 11 seasons if everybody just got along and 
shit was normal. I know, was, I know, but it's yeah. like I show up every week, I watch this, I feel bad usually now after I watch it, and then I think about it, and I don't know, like, I, I think it's one of those things is that, like, obviously through parasocial relationships, we really believe these people are our families in some ways. Like, we we root for them passionately, even in the awesome comment section here, you got Team Ariana, you got Team Lala, I hate Katie, you got all, I mean, people yeah. are passionately, like, this is like a sports team, like, we really root for these people that we love. Everybody has a differing opinion. And I think that's what maybe keeps bringing us back, but it's wild. And it's like 11 seasons. There's not a lot of reality shows that a- actually get this far, but I do worry about when the lights and cameras go off, Sandoval's not going to know how to be a real person ever. So that's my prayer. My little silent prayer uh, that Tori hopefully Spelling. God is not listening. Uh, no, Tori Sp- <laughs> Poor Tori Spelling. Do you see that today? She can't poop without her kids watching. Did you see that little headline that got released? No, she talked about right. it on her podcast. Yeah. I'm like, we know too much about our celebrities. I want to know less. Let's know less. Anyways. I don't know. I just wonder, I do wonder where we go from here, but I I'm assured that we are going somewhere. There will be a season 12. This there is, is this is not the end. From I don't think there's now. ever, no, there's not hope. There's just going to be a season 12. I don't think there's not, it's not hope. It's just going to happen. We, we love the confidence. We love yeah. the confidence. Well, guys, we are at about an hour. I have a new small horse that I probably <laughs> need to take out so she doesn't. She's behaved herself. She hasn't like she's just been laying there the whole time. Pippa. Pippa. Yeah, she's just laying uh, there. All right, guys. Um, Before we end up jumping off here, Ryan, if they don't know. Oh, yeah. Well, you let them know. Um, I'm going to start on Instagram. Yeah, Instagram. So bad it's good with Ryan Bailey. Oh, here, pull up, pull up my Zach uh, meme from last night. People, Maritza, who does oh my, my graphics, God. I was like, could you make his hair go down like this? Because Zach's hair was so. Look at that. That's that's a fun one we did last night. <laughs> um, oh, pull up the uh, the the Schwartz hair. This is I oh love this. God. I did uh, Schwartz looking like Kate Gosselin from last night. So that's the Instagram account. The podcast, so bad it's good with Ryan Bailey by Betches Media. We do five shows a week. There's also a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash so bad it's good, where we recap Summer House. We do Q and A's. There's way too much content, folks. So just pick and choose whatever you like. And also we have a YouTube channel now uh, where we just post interviews. There's always something more on the audio podcast, but we had Carlos King on this week. We had Kate Chastain on a couple of weeks ago. We had the directors of Quiet on Set, the Nickelodeon documentary that came out. So when we do full, I, I do insane recaps, very like line for line reenacted recaps. So there's something for everybody. But, you know, if you've tried it out and you don't like it, totally get it. But if you haven't, try it out and see if you like it. And smash that like button, folks. That's what we need to do. That's the main thing. That's the main thing. All right, guys. So. We're going to um, pop off of here, but we do have more things coming your way this week. Um, I think I'm going to be out of town just to give everybody a heads up. I know we didn't do Hot Messy on Friday uh, or on Monday, and we're probably not going to be doing it this Friday. I think I have to go to Charleston. So we're going to be there. Um, I'm going to keep you guys posted, especially members only, as we put everything together. But if you haven't, do all of the youtube things, just like Ryan said. Smash that like button. Show some love. And if you didn't catch all of the links for Ryan go to the description of this video, go follow him. And if you're not subscribed to Ryan, get subscribed. Do you, we think, love I get li- Do you think I should get lip filler? It looks, look how thin my lips are. I, when you look at yourself, look at this, look how thin that lip is. Maybe I should get lip filler. Well, you have fine lips. Look at my, okay, bye guys. Bye, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> bye guys. <laughs>